Hey, Tales from the Flipside family, back with another comic shop talk. So you're starting a comic shop. What's the first thing you need to do is to find a location. And when you're looking for uh, a piece of property, what's the big thing in business they all talk about? Location, location, location. Not always 100% true about comic shops because they can be a destination. But one of the things I say is if you find a place uh, like this, you gotta get it. So let's start talking about the different ways you can procure your building. Uh, the best way and the way I wish I could have done was to purchase a building, especially a building that has uh, apartments above it, something where you can make income uh, with the building while you're running your business, help you pay for the mortgage um, and help you really not to have to pay any rent for your business. That That's the greatest most fantastic way to, to get into it and, and run it and not have that worry of the being able to pay the rent. The con to that is that you are 100% responsible for everything. Uh, not only your space, but uh, any rentals you may also have. I have a lease, not a month to month, so you can also go get into that. I was lucky enough not to have to use a realtor to find a space the person who owned the building heard that I had had a flood and he came to me and he said, I have a huge space. It doesn't flood. I take care of the place and I really need to rent it. And uh, so I came over and looked at it. It was five times the size of what I had. I had a little 600 square foot store and I moved into 3000 square feet, which we've completely outgrown. So. <laughs> We're not looking for a bigger space, we're looking for storage. We went into a five-year agreement. I have an unbelievable lease cost. Uh, I think if you're good at negotiations and you pick an area that is depressed, uh, like I did, you saw from the downtown, we, since we've been here nine years, the whole city has started to revitalize. So I'm reaping the benefits of that. Um, I like to think that we were part of the reason that it happened. The building as a comic shop, as a gaming store, as a video game shop is a destination. You don't have to be right downtown, but think about traffic. You guys always hear what I talk about. I'd like to have a thousand people at $10 a week, then, then 300 people, you know, having to pony up, you know, a couple of hundred each. The traffic of a downtown, once it gets up and running, can be great and it can really help bolster your business and, and get to that thousand customers a week. Now, the other way is to go to a mall that's already got traffic, right? You can go into a mall. Uh, they have uh, a different, usually in the mall, it's what they call triple net, which means that you are responsible for everything that breaks down. You probably pay a very high cost per square foot. When I looked into going into the mall and I'm in a lower cost area, it was $21 a square foot a year. For 3,000 square feet, that'd be $60,000, but broken over 12 months, be five grand a month. That is a big nut to crack. Unless you're doing the whole super online, video auctions, exclusives, you know, PT Barnum craziness. If you just wanna be a local collectible shop for your community, uh, it is definitely a hard number to get to. Unless you're probably in New York City, but then you're not paying five grand a month, you're probably paying 15 grand a month. But I've found upstate New York, even farther upstate, there's even lower rents, um, but they have even less people than I even have. And they don't have the, so in my community, there's 8,000, around 8,000 people in my city. I'm less than, 45 minutes from about 100,000 people. So you can be a destination, but you want to be in a stone's throw from big populations. Uh, where there's smaller populations, you pay smaller rents. Where there's larger populations, you pay higher rents. When I moved in here by getting the lease and not triple uh, net, it was all cash flow and I did not have a lot of money to fall back on when, I, when we first opened. I was worried about if anything breaks down, uh, I wouldn't be able to fix it. And sure enough, our air conditioning broke down and our heat broke down. It's an older building. 
things like that happen. I do pay for the maintenance. As long as I pay the, for the maintenance and I have it maintained every year, then if anything breaks down, he pays for it. So that is as fair a square as I think you can get. Probably about 30 grand between the heat and the air conditioning would have been my cost for the breakdown. So if you're in an, a mall and the air conditioning in your portion breaks down, you will be buying a new unit or having somebody come in and repair at a couple of hundred dollars an hour. If you're buying a building, check with zoning, right? Is it a commercial property? Is it a mixed use property? What you can do with it? There's a lot of homework you have to do. It is important that you do it. It's exciting to open the business just to put your money down and get in and start doing it, which is what I did, which we've had a lot of trials and tribulations because of it. I'm probably a good example by being a bad example. My first location, I didn't look into the landlord. Um, I didn't want, wonder why, you know, there was very few businesses in the, in the little mini mall, I was in like a little strip mall, why he wasn't fully rented because the rents were really cheap. It's because he wasn't taking care of the place. And he had had uh, burst pipes before, and I didn't know this. And so, you know, I lost all my comics at my first shop when we had that uh, the flood. But had I done my due diligence, I would have realized that that's a guy you wouldn't want to rent from. Had I went around and looked at some of the buildings that were for sale downtown, it's possible that I could have swung them for what I pay now in rent had I really looked uh, if you want to go back and watch our cyberspace comics uh, three-part series, we, we talked to Steve about uh, his business and what he did was buy a piece of land and put up a warehouse and he filled it full of comics and he's uh, a solid online dealer, huge, huge online dealer. He has like 150,000 listings. Uh, we also spoke uh, to Dennis from Wonder World Comics and he's in a mall. Uh, he's actually expanded into multiple stores of different collectibles. Uh, he doesn't do new comics anymore, but he did rent in a mall where uh, he's becoming kind of the mall's one of the attractions to the mall, what bringing people back to malls, because if you've been in a mall recently, they're not providing you the number of the people that they used to. So anybody that actually is paying that high rate for to be in a mall because the mall attracts a lot of people, they're not getting that attraction anymore. And I don't believe they've lowered their rents. That brings me to another point of you need to check the traffic. We were just outside filming a little bit, just, just a minute ago. You saw me, you saw all the cars going by. When I came in downtown, it was a ghost town down here. I got lucky uh, that it turned around, but nobody came downtown. There was nothing down here. Uh, since I've opened, the, a coffee shop opened, a brewery opened, uh, another, restaur another three restaurants opened, they're building a boutique hotel. It grew up around me, but in the beginning, uh, I didn't see the traffic. But like, if you want to open in a mall, you should go there on a Tuesday, another day during the week, both days on the weekend and count the people. Yeah, you got to stay there a while. Like, you, you really have to do the work and the homework if you want to be successful out the gate and not struggle like I did <laughs> for, for quite a few years. If, if my rent hadn't have been so affordable, and thanks to a lot of my family, my wife and my son, who uh, uh, really helped in the beginning, uh, as well as uh, an one of our early employees. When you're picking a location, you don't wanna have to play the blame game. If you're the, the head decision maker, you wanna make the decision. If you're going in it with your partner, uh, your spouse, uh, you wanna make that decision together. Uh, we made the original decision together for the small space, but I made the decision to move into this large space just because it happened so quickly. He came over, we looked, I signed the papers that day. It, it, we did a little bit of negotiation. He wanted several hundred dollars more than I ended up paying. Here's one of the maintenance things. Uh, so this was actually carpeted, but the carpet had sat in the place for a long time. It was very musty smelling. Now there, there really wasn't any leaks or anything. There was some dampness because there was no air conditioning on during the summer, the humidity and stuff, and it just smelled. And then when we went to take up the carpet, 
it was glued to tiles. So we had to scrape up the tile and the carpet. It was a huge mess. And we've just stayed with what was left, the concrete floors when we picked it up. We would have to close for a couple of weeks and move everything in the store to put down a new floor. Maybe someday, maybe maybe I'll, I'll get a Action Comics number one and sell it and I can then redo the whole store. But for now, no, you're garbage. So originally we were able to have a dumpster. Garbage is very expensive. I think the malls, I don't think you pay for garbage. I'd have to do a little bit more research, but I'm pretty sure the mall has the garbage picked up. But we had a dumpster for a, probably about six years. Started out at $75 a month for a huge one. And by the end I was in their smallest dumpster and it was $275 a month. I didn't get rid of it because of the cost, because it was great to have. Uh, we got rid of it because we don't really own the parking lot that it was in and the landlord that does own the parking lot, even though we have right away, it doesn't conclude guard. It's a whole rigmarole, but that's the stuff you have to negotiate with the people around you also. Unless you're out in a field or out in a warehouse somewhere and you, all the property's yours, you don't have to negotiate anything with anybody. But when you're in a downtown or probably in the mall, if you want to put something outside your store or they have a lot of rules, if you want to break any of those rules, I'm sure that some stores would have a problem with it. So it's back to negotiating with your neighbors on letting you bend the rules, let's say. If you're downtown like me, there's a lot of city rules and zoning board and stuff like the size of our sign can only be 20 square feet which is a two by ten ours is just under 20 square feet because it's a four by five and that's 20 square feet <laughs> i think something like that we actually want to change our sign but again uh getting a light box built is quite an expense. Someone build it and then put it up on your building is expensive unless you can do the work yourself. That's the other thing is how much work can you do on your own? The whole facade, as you saw outside, was not the original facade. Our landlord actually redid the whole front of the building two years after we got in. I can't say enough about the landlord I have. We've become kind of friends and he treats us really great. That is usually not <laughs> the instance. So that's another thing, gauge who you're renting from Try to find out from other people what kind of person they are. And then use your own judgment because a lot of people told me bad things about my landlord and they don't hold true to me. I am in a great spot with mine. So part of your research when you are getting a location should be the efficiency and the costs of your utilities. Now, most landlords should provide you with what the bills were Six months or a year would be the fairest, so you get summer and winter. Listen, if you're down south and you don't have winter, I get it, but you only need the six months then. But you probably have months that are hotter than others, and you, you probably should get a year. With that, you can you know start to figure out your budget for when you're in the place and what it's gonna cost. If a place is built well and it has great efficiency, it's gonna cost you less to run that business. We're always looking to cut costs. You see the lights. Uh, the lights actually was a program through our electric company. I was here two years when there was a switch over to LEDs instead of the old uh, fluorescence. I used to have to change the fluorescence. All these lights have been on since five years, six years ago. Oh, actually, wow, seven years. And I haven't changed one yet. Knock on fake wood. The LEDs are so much more efficient than the fluorescents. They're cooler to, and they don't heat up the place. I'm really glad that I did it. The new air conditioning system, which is also now the heating system because they're uh, heating air pump, um, heat pumps. So they do heating and cooling, uh, are very efficient, really well made. It blows. And we have two. We have one in the back of the store. It would have been ideal to have it in the front of the store. But because the way the building's set up, we, we couldn't do that uh, because of where we had to put the other part of the, the heat pump that sits outside the building had to be on the back of the building. So it's at the actual maximum length uh, right here because our building is 100 feet deep. So this is about, I think, not quite half, probably about 40 feet. Uh, but it runs great and it's been efficient. We had, some, we had to mess around with it a little bit to get it running right but once it does, it's great. So efficiency is very important to your overall cost and not just your rent. Uh, there's a lot of other costs that go into it. And water is another one. Make sure that you wanna see the water bills and what they are on a regular basis. I really don't think you have a water bill in the mall unless that's part of the lease. When you get a building like this, 
Uh, you do pay water. If you own the building, of course, you're gonna pay water. If you have old toilets, they're gonna cost you more to run. If your sink leaks, anything like that. We were getting, we, we had a span where we were getting crazy water bills. We couldn't figure it out. We changed all the things on the backs of the toilets, tightened up all the faucets and made sure there wasn't even a drip. And the city said that we were still using an immense amount of water. Then all of a sudden, it stopped. We didn't do anything different and they didn't do anything. They said they didn't do anything different, but then the bills were back to normal. So we just ended up taking that hit. That's why you need a year's worth of bills. What you wanna see is if there's a uh, time where they raise their water prices. Is it a regular raise? They do it yearly. Is it only done if it's the city that owns the water sewer plant? Uh, does there have to be a law enacted to change the price? You know, these are things that then you can go, and when they're trying to raise the price of water, you can go to the meetings and try to stop it from happening. Uh, like several other videos I've talked about before is being involved with your local city and planning department. All right, now I'm gonna get ready to talk some shit. Your bathroom situation. If you're gonna hold events uh, like Lorcana, like uh, Magic the Gathering, like Pokemon, if you wanna be a sanctioned tournament, you have to have a handicapped accessible bathroom. At least one. If you have two, that's even better. We have two bathrooms, only one of them is handicapped accessible, but that gets us what we need, right? So if you're thinking about being a gaming store to add to your income, you have to look at these things. You have to make sure that uh, the bathroom is handicapped accessible. You have room for tables so you can run the events. You also have to look into the fire inspector. When he comes in, how many people you can have in the building. I was allowed 99 people. That's the max I can have in the building at a time. That is the, in New York State, every state is different. In New York State, that is the maximum number you can have before you have to start doing some serious paperwork. I think the building inspector to avoid the paperwork gave me 99, which was more than enough. I really can't fit more than 60 at my tables now because I needed the more, more of the space for storage and for merchandising. So we probably only can fit 60 anyway, and then you can have another 39 people uh, at the location. So that's another thing you need to find out is square footage. When you're putting in aisles, you need to know how why your aisles, every state is different. I talk about this all the time. If you're in the original 13 colonies, it's town to town. You're, the neighboring town could have a different law enacted for their businesses than you have. Uh, usually once you get out of the 13 colonies, it's pretty much state or county wide, the laws. So you can move around and not have to change things up too much. The federal law for ADA comes into effect a lot, is in your aisle spacing, how far your aisles have to be apart. You know, I would love to narrow my aisles so I could bring up more merchandise, but you know, you can't get a wheelchair through it. You gotta expect different customers. We have, we actually do two, two inches larger. We do 30 inch uh, aisles, just so that we're not like close where, you know, they can come in and you know, fine us or start causing problems over it being like, oh, it's 27 and three quarters. So I always say give a little leeway when there's a, when there's a specific measurement for something. But you want, you want to get in touch with the building inspector or look up all the laws of your area on what you need for evacuation, like single door in New York, uh, really cuts the number of people you can have in the building. Uh, we have two, two exits, one being a fire exit, which we leave open when we're open, but it has a fire door. Even when it's locked, you can get out. We have a basement. You guys have seen it on video before. Uh, we could rent access to that. We do act, do it for storage, but if we want to run anything down there, because there's only one uh, way out, there's a, only a low number of people that we can have down there. And because it's not ADA, we would have to have a space up here for anybody uh, that was handicapped to uh, play the game or whatever we were running down there, we would have to have them capable of doing up here. So I couldn't run like a convention down there or anything like that. Uh, although, you know, it's another 3,000 square, sp 3, square feet, same size as the upstairs. So, I mean, it could 
small a small venue could be but you know we can't use it because of the laws make sure you're doing your homework on all this it, I know it's the tedious part it's the unfun part there's a lot of unfun parts to running a business <laughs> Uh, that's why you hear from all these guys all the time is like, oh, how come your price, your comics aren't priced? Because there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff. And to pay for the manpower to keep everything alphabetized and uh, priced, it's hard. And, and it would be cost prohibitive to have somebody working on repricing my comics regularly. If you're a one man show and you have 5,000 comics and that's all you're doing is comics, sure, you can go through them couple of times a week and reprice everything but when you have a hundred thousand books you know you're selling about a thousand books a week between dollar fifty dollar and regular price books it's very hard to keep up with but because I wanted to be like that I needed to find a space big enough to be that uh, originally I wasn't a tiny I was a one-man show uh, well actually a two-man a one man and one woman my wife she worked there every day with me uh, we put a lot of time and effort into it and then we had the flood but I digress. But I'm much happier in this bigger location because I love to buy. And we were at the, we were filled to the gills at the 600 foot store, 600 square feet. And now at 3,000 square feet, we are filled to the gills too. And I have a storage unit. <laughs> so yeah, I have a problem. <laughs> but plan on that. If you know that you're gonna want a lot of inventory, if you're doing a 3,000 square foot store and you don't want play space, Maybe the back half is all, um, you know, a thousand square feet is a storage, is all storage and you can store all your stuff and stack it on, stack it up and have all the storage you need. And then the 2000 square feet will be for all the merchandising. So there's a lot of ways to set it up. There's a, a lot of ways to be successful in that, but it's all about the research and doing your due diligence first, making sure that you know what the law is uh, making sure, you know, if you don't have a lawyer in your family, try to find one that will read over your lease agreement for, you know, not so much money. You know, you just can't take somebody's word for it. You know, if it, they'll tell you it's a standard lease, but they had their, their lawyer write it. You know, if, if it's somebody who's a landlord who has enough properties where they have a standard lease, they had a lawyer write it. So you need somebody to read the small print, know what everything's about. I lucked out, but I've heard some huge horror stories and that would be the worst way to go out of business is that you just didn't do your homework before you got your space. So remember, keep reading comics and open a comic shop.